Hello, I am Sarah Marino with Nature Photo Guides. Thank you for joining me for this video. Today, we will be talking about two of my composition failures and what I did to address them while in the field. I included a segment like this in one of our recent video tutorials and received some po positive feedback on it, so I decided to repeat it here in this YouTube video. Before going into this discussion, let's all agree that composition is a very subjective matter. Since we are all going to be drawn to different things, the ideas I share in this video are things that work for me. I'm not sharing anything here as a rule or a directive, just some things to think about for your own photography. In the simplest terms, composition is the arrangement and flow of elements within a photo. As the photographer, you are able to make choices about what to include or what to leave out of your photograph and how to arrange fixed elements within your frame. In terms of creativity, I see composition as being a key step in expressing your personal view of a place and your visual preferences. I'm going to go through two examples of my compositional failures using photos from Death Valley National Park. First, we will talk about mud cracks, one of my favorite subjects that gets almost to the point of an obsession. Death Valley has many expansive playas with a diverse array of cracked mud that comes in many shapes, sizes, and colors. These playas provide a lot of fun opportunities for nature photographers, both for expansive scenes and more intimate views. Here is a selection of both processed and unprocessed files to give you a sense of the variety. Here are two examples of compositional failures. Both suffer from a massive confusion of visual cues. For the example on the left, the clouds are really nice with great shape and texture. I tried in vain to find cracks that would mirror the formation in the clouds. Instead, I ended up with lines that lead in all the wrong directions. The only visual cues in the foreground lead the viewer straight out of the frame. This composition offers no progression between the foreground and the background, with the clouds offering the only interesting subject in the frame. The second example on the right suffers from all of the same failures, plus some other ones. Because this line is so heavy and dominant, it controls the foreground. Like the other example, it leads a viewer straight out the right side of the frame. In this case, I was trying to work with this point, which offers a mirror of the mountains in the background. Using that edge of the tile as a focal point leaves everything else feeling very unbalanced. The tiles in this photo are of all different sizes, and this leads to significant inconsistency. This massive grouping of tiles holds a lot of visual weight, but offers very little visual interest. And finally, the only interesting light in this photo is on the edge of the frame, which is pretty much the worst place for it to be. I consider this a more successful composition of cracked mud. The raw file is on the left with the processed version on the right. In this case, the lines point in a better direction, toward the prominent mountain in the background. The shape of the foreground also mirrors the general shape of the clouds. The tiles in the foreground are a lot more balanced because they are of similar size and shape. The lines also enter and exit the foreground in a much more pleasing way. The tiles provide a logical pro visual progression from the foreground to the background. The subjects are obvious. The geometric mud tiles, the dark mountains, and the ominous clouds. The compositional elements pull all of these pieces together without many distractions or visual confusion, and thus I think this is more successful than the previous two compositional failures. The next set of photos we will talk about come from Badwater Basin. Badwater Basin is known for its salt polygons, which expand over many square miles. In this case, the polygons were covered in a thin layer of water from a recent storm, which makes them more interesting to me than a dry salt flat. For reference, here is an example of dry salt flats found in a different area of Death Valley. 
One of the hard things about composing photographs of Badwater Basin is this mountain. When standing on these salt flats, you are very close, so it is very prominent. The mountains on the other side of the playa are much further away. This means that some compositions can instantly feel unbalanced just because of the presence of this massive mountain. Clouds in the sky can help offset that unbalance, as I will show in these examples. We can start with the first photo. When I am composing a photo at a place like Badwater Basin, I spend time thinking about concepts like balance, visual weight, distractions, consistency, and lines. Using this photo, we can talk about a compositional failure for each of those concepts. In terms of balance, the mountains are much heavier on the left than on the right. If the foreground was stronger, this might be less of an issue, but here it stands out to me as a flaw. The clouds also feel pretty unbalanced. The rest of the composition is heading straight while the cloud is pulling my attention to the right. In terms of visual weight, this polygon at the bottom holds a lot of visual weight without offering much to the viewer. It holds more open space than any other polygon in the scene. One small positive is that it is pointing towards the mountain. In terms of distractions, this polygon can't decide if it's in the frame or out of the frame. It catches my eye and gets much more attention than it deserves. Thus, I consider it a distraction, especially since it is on the edge of the frame. In terms of consistency, it is helpful to compare this photo with the other two. In the other two photos, the polygons are much more consistently sized and arranged across the frame, which I think makes the second and third compositions much more visually pleasing. And finally, we can talk about lines. When a photo has strong lines, it is important to think about where those lines are going and how they are interacting with other elements of the scene, like we discussed with the mud cracks example. While this isn't a huge composition fail, I do think it is worth noting that the lines exit the frame for the first example in some awkward ways. If you look at the two other examples, the lines exit the frame in a more symmetrical and even way. In the first example, one line exits at the corner, one closer to the middle, the next one sort of by the right edge, and the final one on the right side. In the other two photos, the way the lines exit feels more balanced and pleasing. We can also think about this series of polygons as an abstraction of a line. This progression of polygons leads the eye to the right without anything else in the composition to pull it back to the mountains on the left. This means that your eye heads right out of the frame if you follow that line of polygons. Overall, I like the second composition. I cleaned up many of the failures from the first version of this photo. I like the shape of the polygons in the foreground, and the cloud mirrors the foreground in terms of shape. The cloud also provides a nice visual counterpoint to the mountain, which helps add some balance. I included this photo because it is missing a less tangible compositional element that transforms the third version that you see here. That element is light. With light on the sides of the polygons, their shape stands out much more distinctively and the mood of the photo takes on much more drama. This scene is better in all of the areas we just discussed. Balance, visual weight, distractions, consistency, and lines. Like I mentioned before, this scene can feel really unbalanced due to the heaviness of this mountain. The clouds here are essential to helping balance out the visual weight of the elements in the sky. The lines enter and exit the frame in pleasing ways. I feel like the visual weight of all the elements in the scene work together well. I've tried to minimize distractions. I like the consistency in the polygons. And I feel like the lines work together fairly well between all of the different elements. If I were designing this scene from scratch, I think I would prefer a larger polygon as a diagonal counterpoint for the mountain, but aside from that, I am pretty happy with the composition for this scene. I hope the concepts we have talked about in this video will give you a few things to think about next time you are out in the field. 
If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and I might do it again with another set of photos. You can see more of our educational ebooks and video tutorials for nature photographers at www.naturephotoguides.com slash ebooks. This includes Desert Paradise, our popular guide to photographing Death Valley National Park. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our Nature Photo Guides YouTube channel. Thanks.